Hello, William Johnson here, and this is a percussion tutorial. We're talking about shakers. What I want to do in this episode, epi episode, episode is show you a few grooves that I use on shakers quite a bit. In the past, I've done some videos and posted videos on my YouTube channel about playing with shakers, different techniques, different ideas to spark creativity, and you know stuff like. Uh, modulating the sound using fingers opening for accents and stuff like that independence playing a shaker while playing a groove stuff like that um, but I wanted to talk about just a few grooves that I often do because we've been talking about playing with the cajon and hybrid drum kit stuff and as in like an acoustic drumming setting uh, so I wanted to talk about a few grooves so I have a few shakers with me and I'm, in this video, I'm just going to show you a bunch of grooves that I do, okay? And then in the other videos, I may upload them at the same time, but you'll see I'm wearing a blue sweatshirt and I, it, the video is much longer. I'll go more into depth of the technique and how to develop that the skill of playing in these, these different grooves that I'm going to show you here. So anyhow... This may be good for singers, people that aren't necessarily percussionists, and may get intimidated about playing with the shaker and just looking for other ideas. This is a good start, but I'm not really going to explain how to do what I'm going to do as much. That's in the next video, okay? Then I'll explain all the stuff I'm doing here. So this is just a quicker video to show you some different grooves. All right. I'm going to show you about seven or eight different styles, okay, of grooves that I use. One is just a basic, basic eighth note based groove. So think if the, this is the tempo, then it might be one and two and three and four. So that's at the very base, right? So if the tempo is faster and I'm keeping it very legato, okay, that's the, especially if it's soft, a soft ballad, Right? And um, what I mean by legato is not staccato. Chi, 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 chi. Notice I'm not doing this up and down. I'm doing more wrists. I talk more about the technique later in another video. But I'm keeping it swishy. Okay? As a poser. So this is just the basic. The net, so that's one. Two, I start adding accents. So the second groove will add an accent on the very first beat. So one, two, three. Four. Okay, so that's a very basic groove. That's two. The next groove that I often like to do is maybe add the accent on every other one. Okay, so I know I'm changing the backbeat on one and three there. But sometimes it drives the song. It depends on what kind of style the song really is. Which leads me into the next one. So that was the first three. Then the, um, I guess this would be from number four. Would be adding a backbeat. Like on two and four. Like a snare. Like a... So that that is where the accent, where the more the, the attack is going to be there. So it'll be like this. One and two Remember to keep it legato. What does that look like sped up? One, two, three, four. And I'm holding it sideways, not vertical like this. Sideways, it gives it more. Think of like a person on a swing and inside the beads are inside and they're swishing back and forth, okay? So that was your fourth. One, two, three, four. So two and four are a little harder, okay? That's if we're in four, four, okay? The next style of groove might just be making it just beat four. And sometimes you do that because in the beginning of some songs, just that fourth beat on the drums is added. Now, 16th note style grooves, okay? This is where we start getting into the, the fun stuff. Now, I, I love doing a more samba, train-like effect. Okay, there's a lot going on there. It feels like it's just another eighth note groove. But there's, there's actually one, two, three, 
four, one, one e and a two e and a three. And then I'll, if I play it straight, those are just straight sixteenth notes. For instance, if I start this metronome, that'll be one and two and that's eighth notes, right? So the sixteenth notes, the, 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 the pepperoni, pepperoni. So that's the that's the first sixteenth note, basic groove, okay? Instead of we're not getting into the funky train thing going on yet, all right? But we're just going straight sixteenth notes. I'll slow it down. So this is the first basic sixteenth note. Just playing legato, swishy, washy sixteenth notes. The next thing is, and I use a lot of fingers here, is to add an accent on the second and the fourth, just like in the eighth notes. But watch, I'm gonna add like a backbeat of two and four. Think this is like a hi-hat groove, but on a shaker. And I'm doing this little flick motion with my fingers at the end to get that accent. Now, the thing about making it straight is it depends on the style of music. If the music is pretty straight, let's say a song is a song like Waymaker. Uh, you are here. Mm, 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 mm. Every now and then I go back and forth to adding to some swing to straight. And I'm listening to the singer, the vocalist and the band, and I'm 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 gauging how my shaker. Should be, but that's the next that groove, sixteenth note groove, just two and four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's that's that right there. The next groove is where it gets a little funkier and more like a samba as. So that's a 16th note, one in a two in. But it's not straight. They're not all perfectly uh, the same note let value. This is this is just straight. One in a two in a three in a four. That's different than this, right? That's different. So th so that funkier type feel is more like this. Like a train. Chugga, 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 chugga. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Right? So that's the next 16th note style groove I have. So these are just a bunch of different grooves that I use depending on the context. But you notice the cool thing is you can switch how you, you know, your approach really on how straight or with swing you want the shaker to be. Are we still recording? Yes. All right. The next thing that I do with the shakers is add two. And this is a pretty cool thing where I'm going to do this. It takes a little more independence, but sometimes if I have a 16th note groove, then I'll just do something where I add two together. Because what's happened now is constant. It's like a sandpaper. It never stops. It's not... It's taking out almost, it's still staccato, but it's taking out all of, all of, well, it's just filling up a lot of space, I guess. So that's the, the next style of groove that I might add there. But what I do more often, because this is something that I just might add, you know, to make some variation, to make it a little bit exciting instead of just monotonous every now. But what I often do is, what you just saw me do is add the accent with another shaker. So we're doubling the shaker. And wh whatever the accent shaker is, is usually softer than the main shaker for me. And the, the reason being is that if I do this and then add that accent, I can hear all the... Whatever this does is definitely going to stand out because it's louder than this one. As opposed to if I switch them and the louder one is the main one. Because it doesn't stand out as much because this is overpowering this one. So that's a real good thing to, to incorporate if you're gonna add another shaker 
and it's going to be the accent, you might want to think about maybe making the louder shaker the one that is, or the softer shaker being the one that does the accent. But it still works out if you want to do, like say you're doing like drop accents. But if you're playing more legato stuff, then make the softer one the one with the accent. So for instance, so some things that I'll do is adding, playing like this. Slow it down. Right? So those are just some pretty cool things uh, to, to add in there. And, and then the next groove is obviously a little more fun with the, uh, the more Brazilian chicka 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 Hey my God, hey na da da And with that, you can also add to Now, what, do you, what I'm also doing here, if I slow down in this groove, and I'm adding this accent, I'm doing this flicking thing. Let me go back to making this the accent, and I'm adding my own like delay or reverb on the shaker. My apologies as the video cut off on me abruptly, and it cut off on you abruptly. Anyhow, I thought about it, and that was a lot of information, anyhow, on the shakers, and I wanna expand on it. I have a couple other videos I will be uploading through this week, possibly by tomorrow or the day after, but before this weekend, hopefully. And so, yeah, anyways, I wanna expand on this later, talk about more about the independence and explain how to play these uh, double-handed shaker patterns, and yeah, just get more into it later on, but anyhow, that's enough for today for this particular lesson. Thank you for watching. Let's talk about uh, playing shakers in the comments. Let me know if you have any feedback on this video, if, I, if you would like for me to expand uh, any farther. I'd love to rap with you a little bit more about that in the comments below. So let's talk about that. God bless you. Have a smile upon you, and I'll see you soon.